control unit is responsible to control and coordinate all the activities that we have in the computer omr in the sense optical mark recognition flip flop in the sense it's a memory unit where i can store only one unit electrically erasable and programmable read only memory hello everyone i welcome all of you to the first session on the first chapter that's computer system and overview what exactly i have in this chapter all of you know about this chapter you know all the concepts what i'm going to discuss in this chapter it's pretty easy you will be able to score easily in this chapter so don't create a lot of curiosity so let's get into the chapter without wasting much of your time so guys this is what i will be discussing in this chapter the first thing that i would like to speak about the basic computer organization how exactly logically all the components are connected is what i'm going to discuss in this topic and then followed by that i will be discussing each and every unit that we have in the system so input unit output unit and the control unit that's what i'll call it as a cpu and also i have memory unit so this is what i will be discussing in detail in this session so let's start with the first concept that i have so i have something called hardware and software of course we all know computer is a device which performs a lot of multiple tasks at a time it's an electronic device that all of us know so this is the basic definition why are you repeating it sir yes you all know about it so let's understand what is hardware and what is software what is hardware and what is software which you have studied in the you no know, uh second standard third standard but still let me discuss this basic topics and then i'll move forward to the next topics what exactly i have hardware a physical electronic component which you can touch and feel is what i will call it as a hardware software in the sense a set of instructions is what i will call it as a software i repeat for all of you a physical electronic component which you can touch and feel is what i will call it as a hardware a software in the sense a set of instructions is what i will call it as a software so fine i have the better idea about the hardware and software what next i have so please understand so this is the basic computer organization what exactly you are trying to explain sir if i say the computer this is how logically the components of the computer are organized i repeat logically this is how the components of computers are organized so we have different units in the computer let me discuss that one by one in detail in today's session with the help of this diagram first thing that i would like to speak about the control unit what is that i have so i have the control unit so that's what i will call it as cpu before i call it as a cpu i have something called control unit in this i have three important things the first one that i have alu the second one that i have registers and the third one that i have is control what exactly this control unit is all about let me start with this control unit is responsible to control and coordinate all the activities which is happening in the computer i repeat for all of you my dear students control unit is responsible to control and coordinate all the activities that we have in the computer so when i have the control unit i have something called alu why do i have alu alu in the sense arithmetic logic unit if i want to perform any arithmetic operations or any logical operations so the main thing which is responsible to perform that is alu i repeat for all of you if i want to perform any arithmetic or logic operations i will be dependent on alu arithmetic and logic unit 
same way I have registers. Same way I have registers. What exactly this register is all about? Yes, I will speak about this registers in the coming slide in detail. But it stores. It stores the data. It stores the data. What type of data? How exactly it is storing? I will speak about that. Please understand this is the important content that you should remember with respect to the control unit. So fine. Then how do I get the input from the user? Only then I will be able to perform all the other things, right? The first thing that you should understand that is input unit. Please understand. I have something called input unit. What is the use of input unit? The use of input unit is it is responsible to take the input from various input devices. I repeat input unit is responsible to take the input from various input devices like keyboard. Come on everybody what is that I have keyboard mouse joystick all these things I will call it as an input device. So this input unit is responsible to take the input from all the various input devices. Once it takes the input, so with the help of the bus, this is what I will call it as a bus. This is what I will call it as a bus. I will discuss in detail about the bus. So once the input is coming, so that input is taken with the help of input unit. So fine. I have the control unit, I have the ALU and I have the register. So where should I store whatever I am getting? So I will store it in memory. I will store it in memory. Why do I need memory? So I have some place to store my data. I have some place to store or to perform some task. That's what I will call it as memory. I have two types of memory. One is random access memory another one is read only memory that's what i will call it as a ram or rom i repeat we have two types of memory one is ram and rom before going to that let me explain in detail we have something called primary memory and we have something called secondary memory what is this primary memory and what is this secondary memory sir Primary memory in the sense it is RAM and secondary memory in the sense it is ROM. I know I am uh, dealing this topic you now uh, with a lot of basics. Maybe you might uh, you know, feel bored because all of you know about this but I am teaching this for the guys don't, those who don't know. If you know this topics, please skip and fast forward the content. All right. So but I have to explain this because there might be some student who will not be knowing this. Keeping that in mind, I will be teaching. Yes, I'm coming back to the topic. We have the memory. In that, we have two types of memory. One is primary memory. Another one is secondary memory. That's what I will call it as a RAM and ROM. RAM comes to the primary memory where in which if the power goes off, whatever the data that I have, so everything will be erased from the RAM. But when it comes to ROM, it is not like that. Even if the power goes off, the data will be there permanently. So I will call that as a non-volatile memory. So we understood about three units. One thing is input unit. Input unit is responsible to take the input from the user. And we have memory unit. So memory unit in the memory unit, we have two types of memory. One is RAM, another one is ROM. So you understood what is RAM and what is ROM. So find the same way we have control unit in that we have arithmetic logic unit and we have registers. That's what you need to understand. And the next two important things that we have is output unit. Output unit. Okay. So what is that we have? So please understand output unit is responsible for output unit is responsible for producing the output so to display the output so how exactly how exactly we have various different output devices so this unit output unit is responsible to give the output to the various output devices that we have so you can ask me the question sir 
you spoke about the memory that we have ram and rom yes if we classify in detail please understand we have something called storage unit and memory unit again we are further dividing it what exactly memory and storage unit i think i have explained uh, you know primary memory and secondary memory think give a thought which one will come for this memory and which one will come for the storage unit so if i say both put together i can say it as a memory unit but if i still classify it so i can spread it like this i can do the division i can specialize it how i have memory and i, I have a storage unit now do you tell me which one will come for you was thinking that i know everything right now you tell me which one will come for memory and which one will come for storage unit yes whatever you have guessed it it is right the memory ram i will treat it as a memory and rom i will treat it as storage unit that's what you need to think that's what you need to understand why there is a reason behind that if i want to execute anything if i want to execute anything in the computer please understand it's very important we will execute that particular task inside the ram that's what i will call it as a inside the memory if i want to execute anything make sure that we will execute inside the ram that's very important thing that we need to understand so this is how the computer is organized virtually this is how the components of the computers are organized virtually this is what you have to remember this is the entire session that i have i'll just go through the concepts quickly this is what you need to remember this diagram is very important i'll just summarize it very quickly i have the control unit this what i have i will just call it as a control unit so which controls and coordinates all the activities of this computer so i have input unit so why do i have input unit it is responsible to take the input from the input device all right so next one is output unit the same way like what i have input unit so in the same way i have output unit so it is responsible to give the output in a with various different output devices that's what you need to remember in the same way i have memory unit again the memory unit is getting divided in two one is memory as well as storage unit this is what you have to remember it's one of the important topic in this chapter all right so moving on to the next one i think i have uh, spoken in detail about the input unit okay so i think i have spoken in detail about the input unit it's responsible to take the input from the user and i have a uh, different input devices i have listed out few input devices i have keyboard mouse you know a very very important thing that you need to remember so please remember micr what is this micr so magnetic ink card reader or we can also call it as a recognition okay and also i have a uh, optical reader and we have a uh, optical mark recognition and we have ocr so please understand we have we have ocr also optical character recognition mr omr what is that omr world one gram is that no omr in the sense optical mark recognition probably you would have uh, uh, done this whenever you are writing your exams competitive exams or you would have marked how exactly it is working i think all of you know right you need to mark with the dark color so that will be recognized when you scan it so all those things we call it as a input devices right uh, let me not uh, spend much time on this moving on to the next one i think i have a uh, output unit so output unit also like you know output unit is formed with the help of output devices scratch the computer so guys even this is responsible to produce the output with the help of the output devices like monitor printer and speaker so this is what you need to remember moving on to the next one that is cpu central processing unit so main control center or the processing unit and the processing unit is what you need to remember so guys uh, it's also called as brain of the computer which we have uh, which we are studying this statement from our school days right so all these things you might feel you know uh, very simple but still it's very important to understand we have arithmetic logic unit as i told you it's responsible to perform all the arithmetic and logic operations is what you need to 
remember if you come to this topic and then we have control unit so please understand control unit if if at all it comes to your mind about the control unit you need to remember it controls and coordinates all the activities of computer only that much that's very important that you need to understand right uh, moving on to the next one registers I, I told you in the beginning diagram that I will be speaking about the registers yes I think it's the right time that I should speak about the registers what exactly registers is all about registers before I start speaking about the registers let me explain something else which you don't know I think what I'm feeling uh, is you might feel that you know all the topics whatever I'm discussing in the session is pretty easy and you know but let me make you feel that you learned something new in this session also we have something called flip-flop okay imagine this is a flip-flop not the slipper what you wear okay so flip-flop in the sense uh, in the computer organization it's a capacity or it's a memory where I can store only one binary bit only one bit okay so it can be one or it can be zero I repeat flip-flop in the sense it's a memory unit where I can store only one unit only one unit it can be one or zero that's what you need to remember so what is register then so register is a group of flip-flop register is a group of flip-flop when it comes to the register you will have 8 bit register you will have 16 bit register you will have a 32 bit register 24 bit register so it will come like this what is the meaning of it if I say 8 bit register you how many flip-flops do you need to form 8 bit register you need to have 8 flip-flops you need to have 8 flip-flops then now I think if you understand this concept you will tell me why do we need the register of course yes we use the registers to store the data we use the registers to store the data so then why do we use memory we use the registers to store the data temporarily if I want to execute some instructions if I want to store some instructions if I want to store the address okay I will be using the registers whenever I'm executing some task I will be using this registers that's very important that you need to remember with respect to registers right so registers are processor registers are small units now it holds a small unit of data is what you need to remember not a uh, big capacity register has got the CPU uses registers to temporarily hold some important processing information during the time of you know, processing it is taking place that's what uh, I have explained you all in the beginning CPU may store some part of data or some memory address or some instructions in the processing registers right all of the points we have already discussed memory I think we have discussed primary memory and secondary memory so when it comes to primary memory that's what they call it as a main memory here we what we have something called RAM okay that's what we call it as a main memory that's what we call it as a primary memory all right so we have also secondary memory too that's what you need to remember so I think I spoke enough about the RAM in the beginning so we have two types of RAM is what I have not discussed so please understand that so we have dynamic random access memory that's what they will call it as a DRAM and also I have static RAM so SRAM so that's what that's a two different types of RAM we have which I have not discussed in the beginning so please understand and make a note of it we have two types of RAM one is DRAM another one is SRAM so that's what you need to remember right so moving on to the ROM so ROM is a non-volatile memory that I have already discussed. So, guys, the memory from which we cannot, we can only read, but we cannot write onto. Okay. So, this type of memory is non-volatile. Non-volatile in the sense what? So, please understand, non-volatile. Uh, in the sense, even the power goes off, your data will be there. That's what we call it as a non-volatile. But the memory from which we can only read, but we cannot write on to uh, in some of the cases in some of the different types of ROM it, it the statements stays wrong okay we can also write okay so that's what you need to remember in some of the cases the next one that I have uh, the different types of ROM that I have I have uh, 
prom what is this prom programmable read only memory so i told you in the beginning uh, it is not only for read only so we also can do something okay so that's the important thing that i want to discuss here so i have different types of rom in that the first one that i have is programmable read only memory the second one that i have erasable programmable read only memory the second one that i have is eprom what is that i have eprom eprom in the sense whatever the content that i have i can just erase it and then again i can program so that's what you need to remember what's the next one i have eeprom what is that eeprom electrically erasable and programmable read only memory so that's what you need to remember if i have any content i will electrically erase that by sending the electrical signals whatever i have i will erase it that's what you need to remember and then i have a uh, mast rom and i have flash ee prom this is all about the different types of rams that i have so guys please understand so this is what i have in this session all of you know that whatever we have discussed it's a basic thing that's why i did not drag it much so whatever i have in the next session it's very interesting let me see you guys in the coming session with some interesting stuff till then please take care bye bye